Hey guys, it's a beautiful day out here in South Texas. Me and the team are out here doing a little bit of bass fishing. And as you can see, we're having some pretty good luck. Matter of fact, I'm just pulling in uh, a largemouth bass on uh, a plastic lure. What basically we see here is a bass that's given in to temptation. There's something that he's seen that appears to be real, that looks like the real thing, but really it's not. You know, James chapter 1, the half-brother of Jesus said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, because when he's tried, he'll receive the crown of life, which the Lord promises to those that love him. You know, there's nothing wrong with being, tempta with, with being tempted. We see where Jesus was led in the wilderness, and he was tempted for 40 days. There's no sin in being tempted. The sin is in giving in to the temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe it's verse 5, says, there is no temptation that takes you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and He'll not allow you to be tempted above what you're able. You know, every single one of us face temptations. Every single one of us have weaknesses. And I want to make sure that you understand that Satan is acutely aware of what my temptations are and what yours are. Even though they may be different, they're a lot like the lure that we're fishing with today. It's something that's put in our, our path. Now, a bass, he's a predator. In essence, he's a monster. When he sees something that appears to be the real thing, like this soft plastic lure that we're fishing with today, he creeps up on it, and then by the time that he realizes that he's been caught, it's too late. You know, really, there's something to be said for. As soon as he opens his mouth, he gets caught. Well, James, the, the half-brother of Jesus, says that every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That God doesn't tempt any man, but a man tempts himself. You know, we have the ability to overcome temptation. I wish I could say in my life that every time the temptation has come around that I've not given in to it. That's not the case. But I do know this. I know that God's Word teaches us that we have the ability to overcome it. That no temptation will come to us that God will not make possible for us to overcome. What weaknesses are there in your life? You know, there's a scripture that I think about in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. And even though it's predominantly written to those that don't know Christ, this is what it says. It says, if God perhaps will grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now listen to this. That they may escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. What the Bible is actually saying, there's a Greek word there for trap. It's called pagis. And what it means is, it's a decoy, it's a snare, it's a trap, it's a bait. It's a lot like this plastic lure that we're fishing with today. It's something that Satan puts along in our path to trip us up, to keep our eyes off of Christ. You know, the great thing is, is that Jesus Christ identifies. No matter what you're facing today, no matter what trials, no matter what temptations, no, no matter what the temptations are, he's been there. But the great thing is, he's overcome. And because he is overcome, he gives us the ability to overcome. You know, we've just embarked on a new year. It's 2011. And I know one of the prayers that I've had, and I, I believe it's true for many of you, is that this year would be a year that you would know Christ in a way like you've never known him before. That this year would be a year that your life would be a life that would be pure and holy. A year that maybe you could overcome some of the struggles that you faced in the past. You could overcome some of the weaknesses and some of the things that you've given into. Well, I want you to know that you've got a friend that's six closer than a brother. He's with you every single step of the way. And you know it's ironic? Sometimes the, some of the temptations that we face, it seems as if we can overcome them quickly. And then I know some people that love the Lord that have struggled with certain things for years. I know that some of the greatest regrets in my life have been some of the reoccurring things that I've struggled with, that I've had to ask God to forgive me for over and over and over. Well, here we are today on this beautiful clear lake, fishing for bass, but there's a lot of symbolism here. Because I believe that today Satan also is fishing for us. He's throwing out different lures and different temptations to get us away from Christ. May 2011 be a year that we have a commitment and a drive and an obedience to God that we've never had. He will, he can, if you'll surrender. The greatest thing we can give him this year is our obedience. Well, I hope the heat's been a blessing to you today, and I want to encourage you. This is a, a great tool that you can post on your Facebook page. You can email to other people where they can sign up. 
we're trying to keep this where this is not some type of a, a, a churchy video thing, but just something that's real day-to-day -day in life that people can relate to, that people can connect to, whether we're in the great outdoors, whether we're in a building somewhere, whether we're on the road. We just want you to know that Jesus Christ, He cares about you. And not only does He care about you, but He's got a great destiny for your life. And it all begins with us, number one, surrendering our life, accepting Him as our Lord, God, and Savior, and not giving in to those lures that Satan's thrown along the path. Walk in His power. Ask Him to fill Him with your spirit. Share the video with folks you know. God bless. Good fishing.